Hi Fight fans, this is Ryan Macchiniano of CSNBarrier.com's Inside the Ring. I'm here at Victor Conti's Snack Offices in San Carlos with the number four pound for pound fighter in the world, Nanito Donaire, as he prepares for his October 22 showdown against Omar Narvaez of Argentina at New York City's Madison Square Garden Theater. Well, we're glad to have you back uh, after that eight month layoff. Now, your next fight is October 22 against Argentina's Omar Narvaez. He's a southpaw, he's undefeated, uh, he's a former champion at 112 pounds at flyweight, 115, and now he's going to be gunning for your two titles. How does it feel to have somebody coming for your uh, two belts at 118 pounds? It feels great. I mean, usually I'm the one gunning for everybody, you know. And actually I feel like I really, you know, I had a tweet from um, Robert, uh, Robert Guerrero the other day or yesterday saying, stating that, you know, everybody's going to be getting for you, you got to work hard, you know, um, stay on top, you know, and that was, that meant a lot uh, to me because he's a great friend, you know, and I, I, I wish him the best of recovery and all that stuff, but, you know, it reminded me now that I'm on top and everybody's going to try to gun for me and, and, you know, and he's been there and so, so, uh, just gotta work hard, you know. I uh, just gotta do my best and, and represent and, and just enter. Yeah. What have you seen from him? I've been watching. You know, he's a, he's a tough kid, you know, with a lot of experience. You know, he's he's uh, undefeated. He's 36, so he's been in there. He's done it all. He's 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 had it all. He's had all kinds of opponents and and beat, and beat them all. So he is a hell of a fighter. He's got a lot of experience. I think this guy is, is one of those that that likes to take his fights into the long into the longer rounds, into the late rounds. So we gotta you know we gotta be ready for that too. Well, you're a very cerebral fighter. In fact, I'd say you're the best in the world in the lower weight classes as far as setting traps for your opponents. What have you and your trainer, Robert Garcia, uh, planned as far as neutralizing a southpaw like Narvaez who comes at you with a little bit of head movement and has a big left hand? We'll see if it translates to the 118-pound you know, weight class, but what are your thoughts? I mean, I have no doubt that it will because I was able to bring it my power from 112 to 115 to 118. So we always want to look at it the best possible way, you know, um, and we never look beyond beyond the guys. I mean, everybody's talking about, oh, um, uh, 22s and 26 guys, you know, and, and we want to work focus on Norvias. Um, what we have, I mean, I haven't seen the guys fight yet, so so I can't really say what I needed to do, but one thing that I have that advantage on is the, sp is the speed, so as well as the power and, 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 uh, and the height. So we definitely want to take advantage of the height and, and uh, take away his jabs and whatever he needed to do. And, and of course, um, being a counter puncher, uh, we want to take advantage of that of every opening that we see. So, so far, um, Robert's coming in again um, this week to do all the sparring stuff and, and to see if, if everything goes well and then we'll put the game plan together as, as well. But mainly, the advantage is the height. Now, making weight is never easy. Uh, you've got a great team as far as that department. You've got Victor Conti and Remy Korchemny here at Snack, uh, as well as Mike Basil and uh, Brian Schwartz at Undisputed Gym. Tell me about the process here, making 118 for the very last time. And is it a relief? Uh, do you feel glad to be leaving 118? Definitely. I mean, I feel that you know, the more that, that I age, the more that um, the more difficult it is for me to. Uh, take out the weight. I mean, you know, with the training with Remy and all these guys with, with Bass, um, I've created more muscle mass. So it, of course it's going to be more difficult than the last time. And, and being off for a couple of months, for a few, for several months, um, had created a lot of strain on my body too. Because it's trying to keep every everything that I have in my body. So um, that, that's also, that's also a uh, um, What's making it hard for me, but you know I have I have faith in you know, all my guys and, and my my training at ethics. So so uh, you know um, it's gonna I'm gonna do it. You know, but definitely this may be the last time I'm gonna be fighting 118 because you know I'm here to have fun, not 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 to suffer and and, and, and have my my mentality all messed up and, and get in bad moods and get in fights with my guys just because you know it, it's not good. We want everybody to work and then. You know, everybody loves me and, and I love them the same way uh, in my corner, you know, they, they all have that loyalty as much as I have the loyalty for them. Um, but they're all great friends of mine and, um, and they're always going to be there, so, so 
I really do work hard because of that. Now, Victor Nanito's coming off an eight-month layoff uh, for this particular fight. He's going to be making 118 for the last time in his career before moving up to 122. Did you guys face any obstacles uh, in particular for this camp? Well, there's been a number of minor you know, setbacks or little injuries that you get here and there as you do with, with any camp typically. Um, Nonito was weighed a little bit more this time coming into camp and, and uh, the weight started to come off a little more slowly than, than the two previous camps. But he's doing well and he's, he's right where he needs to be right now and, and uh, he'll make eight, 118 uh, you know, fairly easily and uh, I think he'll put on a great performance in, in New York. Nonito sent me a text message recently saying that uh, that he's now uh, you know equal to where he was at. Of course, we've done the comprehensive blood testing as we always do, and he looked not only as good as he did before the Montiel fight, but in some parameters even better. And he said, "Well, he feels that he's monster man now, but uh, soon he'll be he'll be galaxy man, which is a, a n another level he plans to step up in this fight." Well, for this camp, uh, trying to get to that galaxy man level. Uh, reportedly, and, and, and you can confirm this, but apparently Nanito Donaire has been utilizing PED. Um, is that true? Well, it, PED in the sense that uh, he's been taking a, a new product that a Snack is coming out with, uh, and it stands for Performance Energy Drink. It's not uh, performance enhancing drugs, <laughs> as most uh, know PEDs, but initially uh, during the pilot study phases, when we had all the athletes taking uh, this, this new energy drink, uh, we called it pre-workout energy drink. And I joked with Nonito one day and said, PED, and then we started referring to it as PED, and I thought, well, we can't call it PED. And then we got the idea to, to broaden the scope uh, of it a little bit and call it performance energy drink. And I said, so what do you think? And, you know, should I do something like that? And Nonito said, I think it's a great idea. And, and so PED became the name of, of the new energy drink that we're coming out with. Now, this is going to be your first fight in New York, and not only that, Madison Square Garden. Did you ever think, as a young boy growing up in the Philippines and later here in San Leandro, that you'd be on the marquee as a headline attraction? Nope. I didn't even know I was going to be, bo I didn't even know I was going to be boxing. I mean, my first time my dad told me, hey, John, do you want to uh, box? And, I was, and he, for some reason, he asked me while this Gotti fight was going on. Gotti was bloodied up. And, the other guy was bedded up and I looked up and I was just like shaking in my boots. I was like, heck no. I don't want to box. I don't want to get hit in the punch. I don't want to hit anybody. You know, at that time I was only like 10. So, uh, you know, I was always afraid of, of, of everything. You know, at that time I was always afraid because I was always being picked on. So, uh, so growing up, I mean, you know, that they say God has a, a, a great sense of humor. He does because, you know what? It led me to hear, but then that the sense of humor also can also help out a lot of the guys. What I aim to do is just inspire as much as I was inspired because I didn't, I, I, I can't fathom nothing. I mean, just just some kid who who had nothing, who didn't believe in himself, and to be able to to become a world champion and and and, and be main events. I mean, there's world champions out there who were just in the corner or in the background. But I'm actually in the front, for, uh, front, you know, forefront. So it's all a blessing. I mean, that's why I, you know I'm, I'm most thankful for all the blessings and, and, and the people that that are behind me, the people that support me. I mean, my fans, just everything. Because I just can't think. I mean, even being outside of, of the ring, it's funny because I'm a big fan of boxing. So being outside, I I, I look at myself. I'm like, wow! I can't believe I'm, I'm there. I can't believe that I'm watching myself on TV. I'm like, wow, you know. And then, but when, of course, when I'm in there, it's a different persona. It's a different guy, and he believes in, in everything that that I had worked for. He believes that that he deserves everything, all the claims, all the what people are raving about in the Lunar. But for me, being outside, I look into that. And I'm like, that's crazy, you know. So it's all a blessing.